Okay. And I think we are live. Hi, everybody. Yes. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have Risa Hasbrook here and uh, with Risa for coaching. And we are going to do our expert interview. And we are so happy. Everybody give Risa a big welcome back. We missed you because you've been traveling. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> yes, yes, we missed you, but we're glad you're home and safe and sound. And now you are going to be sharing with us something that I think is very cool, very needed. Um, becoming your own best friend. Yeah. Yes. Describe what this mission is. Okay. So I especially work with Christian women and I often find that Christian women struggle with this. It's like, no, we should be selfish. It <laughs> is going to be selfish to yes. pay too much atten attention to yourself or to think about yourself. And I want to kill that misconception. <laughs> yes, yes. Put it in the ground. It is not needed. Okay, so I would like to compare it like being your own best friend is like having a relationship with a low maintenance friend. Like you, you don't think of her all the time. You don't, um, you don't spend so much time with her. But when you do think of her, it's with so much love and appreciation. And yes, you know, that friend she will have your back she will be there for you and that's the way you want you want that kind of relationship with yourself as well but if you've never had that yes <laughs> you first have to spend the time to establish that kind of relationship with yourself and i have this um let's call it a challenge and i'm mostly running it on instagram yes every day we are reminding ourselves how to be our own best friend for 30 days in a row, 30 weekdays. So it's actually six weeks. And we, I think I'm posting day six or five today. So okay. already okay. there, but anybody can join in at any time. Awesome. Awesome. So it's really in, in many ways. I mean, I can remember back when I was, um, a um, single for the second time. And, you know, I was learning to adjust to that new reality, right? That new reality of being single again. And, you know, your relationships all change in that moment. Um, you, you know, you kind of have to start over. And I had to learn how to be my own best friend. I had to learn to go to the movies by myself, to go out to eat by myself. And, you know, people would be surprised at that, but, you know, it became a very empowering thing. Yeah, it is. So talk a little bit about the empowering nature of being your own best friend. So what we are doing is like, it's a journaling experience. So every day, I give a new journal prompt generally uh -huh. and you know when I knew this interview was coming up I was uh -huh. thinking what are the kind of things that we are working on right and I decided like typically it's we would think back of some a success you've had right and also the other thing is some strengths that you have so talents oh, which that God yes. gave you and I but I can totally when you do that when you remind yourself every day and it's not supposed to take longer than 10 minutes. It's a small little exercise. Okay. You just get so much more grounded. You like yourself more because you remind yourself, okay, but I, I was able to cope with that. Just like you did now when you uh -huh. were single. It was uh -huh. hard, but I did it. And right. As if you can borrow from that success or borrow from the strength you already know you have. And I think that's why it's so empowering. Why you feel... As if you can cope with life better, you can achieve more, you can show up in a different way. I like that. I really so this even goes beyond just being comfortable in your own um being comfortable being alone, right? This goes towards actually learning to celebrate your positives. 
Yes, it's a self acceptance. It's like so important. Yes, yes. This is very, very good. What what prompted you to dive into this? Because it's it it honestly, you're you're very correct when you say that in the Christian community we forget this. Yes. We, we look at it as being selfish, self-absorbed. Um, how, describe how you arrived here. Okay, so what actually brought me to, to life coaching in general was the relationship I had with my mother. Okay. And it was very bad. And mostly because it was my fault. <laughs> it was, my, my, my dad died almost 20 years ago and my mother was very dependent on him yes fell apart when that happened and she was like expecting me to take over his role completely but I had my own life I had my own husband and my own kids right I felt so so guilty and she wanted me to do all these things for her but it mostly emotionally just be there for her all the time and then you know the problem when you do things out of guilt it's the resentment. Right. Yes. Doing things because you feel guilty about them is never, never a good place to start no. a relationship. No. The resentment builds up and then the shame comes with it. Exactly. So yes. The important thing was to learn to be there for myself first. Yes. To be able to tell her no, lovingly tell her no. Mm-hmm. When it wasn't, you know, it's like setting up boundaries when it it wasn't a good time for me or I felt it was something she could handle on her own. Right. But being able to say no also gave me the opportunity to say yes at times. Yeah. So now I want to do things with her, for her and I want to spend time with her. Yes. I can tell her no when it needs be. But it, I couldn't, wasn't able to do that before I learned to like and to love myself and to just acknowledge that I have needs too. Right, and right. That, you know, if we think of people that are very needy, they are mm-hmm. not nice to be around. Mm-mm. And that's also why I tell Christian women, when you work on yourself, on that relationship with yourself, you are actually able to show up better for your family, for your community, for your church. Right. You are so anchored in yourself. You are so anchored in your love that God has for you. Yes. Back to that again and again. Yes. And that's, you know, that's why I arrived at, at this work. It's I see with my clients as a coach, I see how important self-acceptance is all the time. Oh, yes. You know, um, I, I, I really, I love, I love the foundation that you have there because it, you, you're, you're, you're definitely, you know, creating with this, that, that basis in which to be able to love others from and and do it in a sustainable way that's it oh this is awesome it's the whole love your neighbor as yourself but we are working on the as yourself part yes. <laughs> in my challenge at the moment because yes many christian women never they've never done that right yeah it absolutely it's all duty driven <laughs> and you know um you know, I think so often about you know, if I if I just reflect on my own relationships, the strongest relationships are the ones where I'm not feeling compelled or or in at that negative sense of the word. Obligated. Word. Exactly. Word that's coming up a lot in my sessions. Yes. yes. Obligated to, you know, to do something. Thing. and then the resentment bolts yes 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 so you've described doing journaling exercises um could you describe what we yeah, what is one of those journaling exercises so we are definitely working very hard on beliefs and oh. and i want to you know you know ground you in your love that the love that god has for you that unconditional love he has for you through mm-hmm. christ he looks at you as if you are perfect course our dearly beloved savior did all the work for us yes and so that is a lot so we would write a lot on 
where do you find your value? What's mm. your worth? And yesterday I posted this interesting one and I think people find it a little bit strange, but I'm comparing just to make it easier on our minds, right? Uh -huh. I'm thinking of a hundred dollar bill. Uh -huh. I'm holding it up and then I, I crush it and I trample it and I even tear it apart and Ooh. put it together again. And I ask you still, do you still want this? Ooh, uh-huh. Of course you still want it, even though it's not perfect and it doesn't have that off the presses smell anymore. Right. Your worth as a human is a lot like that. Even with all the bad things that happened in your life, your right. worth as a human is untouchable because it is, you are human and you were made in God's image. Yes. That makes you valuable and, and yes. precious. And yes. Alone, and nothing can touch that. Oh, it's like so reminding good. people of those kind of things. Yes. So that's a, that would be a typical example of one. Oh, of that is so, so good. That is so good. And, you know, we were when we were talking about this a little bit together the other day, I had just um, been studying about the Trinity and one of the... Um, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And one of the commentators or commentaries that I read talked about how they are in relationship with one another, yet they're one. Yeah. And this is a love relationship within that unified being of God. And they 100% they love and honor each other. And it's out of that that their love for us is born. Mm. So how much m more do we need that same love and honor of ourselves in order to pass that on? Yes. It's, so one of the other things that I, we do some fun things as well. Yeah. Uh huh. Look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I love you. <laughs> it's like, it's accepting your body as well. Yes. Oh, so important. So it's just like you're not perfect, but you're still 100% perfect in a sense. So when you think of the Trinity and also you, the mind, body, soul, uh -huh. work together, it's like one day I just tell people, go oh, dress well today. Because when you dress well, you signal to yourself, I'm worthy, I'm, I'm precious. It's, and I think of the research that people find that when people are depressed, they stop paying attention but we are sort of reversing that process by you are deliberately putting on something nice just for one day and remind yourself I'm worth it I'm worth taking the trouble for myself so yes I like what you're saying it's like flowing in but it's also then flowing out as well. yes I love you know I'm, I'm really I'm really appreciating the detail that you go into I mean the observation of how you're dressing and how that makes you feel. Um, the, um, oh gosh, what was one of the other, you mentioned another exercise. The beliefs, the beliefs that you, you know, grounding yourself in, and, and then I use spirit. Oh, spirit, I use scripture a lot. So uh -huh. scripture and reminding yourself of some of the Bible verses that tells you how much God loves you and how much he values Oh, this is... This is really, really good because you know what I'm seeing here is that this is the antithesis of narcissism. The, you know, we, we, you know, we, we, we're very aware of that word in society right now. And, and it's often misunderstood um, and, or not fully understood. And narcissism really is the opposite of actual love and honor for yourself. Yes. And acceptance of yourself, even the bad bits. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Because I think, I think, and you've said this before, that narcissists, they are so afraid of their faults and they have to keep up this perfectionist front and mask to the world. And that's why, you know, they are so hard to live with because they are not, they don't accept all of themselves. They forget that God accepts them as they are. Right. Yes. Right. Right. And when we are not afraid of our flaws, 
we are able to begin work on those areas of weakness. Yes. If you're afraid of them, you can't do anything about them. So let me tell you a story about that yeah. that happened to me when we were in South Africa. So South Africa is my home yes. country and mm -hmm. my mother-in-law has passed recently, unexpectedly. And so we yes. were like overnight deciding to fly down there and we still had some furniture in storage at her house. Yes. So we, had to clear, we had to clear that out as well as clear her house so that we could sell it or, you know, rent it. We put it out for rent. So it was a lot of hard work doing all of that that we didn't have a lot of time. So at one point I was like cleaning closets and cupboards and it's a sweaty, dusty job. Yes. But before I struggled a lot with shame in my life. I was like, I never felt good enough. I was also always hiding from people where I grew up, kind of parents I had, what my tastes are. And even, you know, as a Christian, uh -huh. that I'm a Christian. Because I'm ashamed and right. the Lord tells us not to do that. But I am going to admit today that I struggled with that. Yes. And what I saw in this incident is I was like, I was only wearing a little bit of foundation and some mascara. Uh -huh. I was looking and, you know, being busy and I didn't pay attention to my appearance a lot. A lot. And then I talked to someone. Uh huh. It, it was a man, and you know, he was just helping with with the move with the um moving the furniture. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when he left, <laughs> I uh -huh. had to look at myself in the bathroom mirror. Uh -huh. I looked like a raccoon. Is <laughs> 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 that before it would have been mortifying? I would have yes. died a thousand deaths that someone, a stranger, saw me in like that. Yes. <laughs> And for a minute there, I was back there. Oh, horrible. How could this happen? Uh huh. It was so hilarious that he could keep his eyes talking to me while I looked like that. Uh huh. I could grin at the raccoon in the mirror. Yes. <laughs> Let go of the shame. <clears throat> it's like when you like yourself more, when you really have established a relationship with yourself, that's the kind of thing that you can do. And it also, it makes a nice blog post. <laughs> yes, yes. You're able to laugh at yourself. Yes. Do the things you've done. So oh. was, it, was, it was good in a sense to go back. I haven't been back to South Africa for four years because of COVID. That was one of right. the Right, yes. So at least we could go. But it, going back there, it's like, you know, that song that the Bee Gees has then when we were small and Christmas trees were tall. Yes. And now it's the opposite. Now I am tall and Christmas trees are small. So it's like mm -hmm. going back to a familiar place and suddenly realizing how I've grown. I've yes. So I just want to tell everybody doing this work, though it takes some time, mm -hmm. it pays off. It pays off. Eventually you are more at ease with yourself and just yes. able to show up and do more things. And even if it fails, you know, it's you, you just get up and do it again. Yes, yes. Oh, I, I, it, it is extremely empowering. And um, again, it, it is absolutely the antithesis to narcissism. It is, it is in many respects, the cure to that. Yes, I think so too. Not Be to take yourself so serious. <laughs> it's like oh, yes, yes, yes. So in one of the, one of the days, I think we also <clears throat> we also learn to ask the question: So what? So if someone you know they don't honor you as much as you would like to, or they laugh at you, or they don't take your work seriously, <clears throat> if you just can allow yourself to ask the question: So what? Do right. I really value their opinion over my own and over God's opinion of me? Yes. So just to go there and it's not always it's not always easy and it's you know it's not to say that you will be able to do it the first time mm -hmm. it's like a mus muscle that you are building yes that those kind of questions i really like that analogy of building a muscle because oftentimes we have to I, i've learned that we have to even if it's not 100 percent something that we we may know it's true we may know something is true, but we haven't come to that place where it's from here to here. Yes. The more we speak it, 
the more it makes its way down to our belief. Yes. So uh, let me tell you another. Yes. I have so many stories. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's like a little tiny exercise every day, 10 minutes. And so I think people are asking, how could this help? But it's a, it's a little bit of a chilling story, but it's a very good illustration. Mm -hmm. um, prisoners, American prisoners of war in Korea, they were brainwashed by their gods. And it, it was so bad that they, they, they sort of betrayed America. They betrayed their homeland. And wow. um, how they did that is the, the god would ask the prisoner of war just to write down this one sentence. The United States is not perfect. That's all they ask. And, you know, they would give them like an, an extra apple or something if they just wrote down that sentence. Wow. Then the next phase is write down why the United States is not perfect. Then they would do that for these little extra, you know, privileges. And then they would read those essays over the radio that was in the prison so that the other prisoners of war could hear that. And in the end, these people that, you know, that gave in, they thought nothing of betraying fellow Americans who tried to escape, for instance. So they, they, they wrote themselves into new beliefs. Oh, my goodness. Just like simple, simple, little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do, but in a positive way. We are brainwashing right. you. We are using that insight, and that knowledge that we have of how you can change someone's beliefs, but in a positive way. Right. So in, 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 in what it, you know, it's a it's a double edged sword. But when you are processing the reality of truth, the reality of God's love, you're changing those those um, what the memory is stored in in certain places in the brain and this reprograms it yes the neural pathways are you talking there about? we go yes reprogramming that. so if for instance imagine if you were to write down every day god does everything for my good just write that sentence down every day and it's straight from scripture right it's yes it's in romans 8 it's yeah. like for him, for those who love God, he works out everything for the good. So right. if you write down, God works everything for the good, for my good. Yes. You will definitely start to believe that. If you right. Know. And then how does God do work everything? You know, what are the things that he has demonstrated? Yes, like the next step yeah. that the gods did, why isn't America perfect? Right. How is God working out everything for my good? If I reflect back on my life to find right. the evidence. Right. That's the kind of work that we are doing. Yes, yes, yes. This is so good. And the fruit of this will be love. Compassion. Compassion, yes. Because, yes, yes, yes. Because... You know, I remember um, years ago, um, my I had a pastor who would say, you, you can't give out of an empty cup. Mm -hmm. And what's in the cup is going to spill out. Yes. So when we don't have any honor for ourselves and the creation of God that we are, what's going to be given to anyone else? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah it's funny that when people accept themselves more they are able to accept other people more when they are able to extend unconditional love to themselves they learn to be able to give that to other people as well right so that's why we are working so hard on the self it's not to be egotistical and you know be no. occupied with ourselves so it's eventually it's to be an, a better instrument in god's kingdom yeah, well, you know, it reminds me of the scripture um, where John says that um, a person who is fearful is not completed in love. Yeah, it's, it's funny that he fear and love that he contrasts those two, right? Yes, yes, yes. And if so, this is really... Um, being completed in love 
Yes. It's it's understanding our value in Christ and how we are able to love because he first loved us until we can really appreciate and value that love. I mean, it's not meant to be ignored. No. no. Right. No, right. We need to celebrate that. And to yes. Of it. Yes. 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 This is so good. So, um, gosh, I've got two different trains of thought going in my mind right now. So pick up where you left off with the journaling exercise. What's the next step that you go through in your in your workshop? I would like, eventually I would love people to work with me as a life coach because I yes. found that for me that made the biggest and the fastest changes in my life was because I, I someone from the outside was looking at my mind and was showing me mm. where my thinking was hindering me and it wasn't helping right. me and helping me to change that and you know like I said when I think back of our recent visit yes. I could see the growth and I, I haven't seen my mother in uh -huh. person, like for four years I speak to her over the phone at least once a week uh -huh. and I will be able to have maintain that relationship that I've established and uh -huh. I could. I was like, I'm not a very patient, patient person, but mm -hmm. that's one of the fruits of the spirit, right? Just yes, yes. And it was amazing how God helped me to be totally, totally patient with my mother. Oh. I never once got, you know, impatient with her. And when she asked me something, I could just love on her and just accept her as she was. I still had the boundaries in place. So yes. I had to tell her, no, I can't spend more time with you, but I, I did it from a loving place. Yes. I don't think I was, I felt so out of integrity as a Christian before. You wow. know, when I say I'm a Christian and I don't have a good relationship with my mother of all people, mm -hmm. I just feel so much more in integrity. But right. it would not, it's, it's life coaching principles. It's someone looking at the outside, at your brain and helping you change that that made it possible for me. So don't get me started on life coaching. I'm not going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will a little bit for you because I really have seen the value of life coaching. I love what I love about it. And what I love about what you are doing with this is um, with this workshop, it's it's a workshop, correct? It's, it's more like a challenge. So you know, okay. I every day I post a video on Instagram about okay. the result of the day. Okay. And a little bit more background and more inspiration, and tell a little story like the one with the dollar ball, you know, things like that. Uh huh. The ideas for people to download the workbook, the journal. It's free. They uh -huh. can go to my website and do it, and just journal along. Uh huh. I would be interested to see how people feel after 30 days of doing this. What what changed for them? But it's it's not really it's not a workshop. It's like a challenge. And it's more of a challenge, a challenge like a direct. Uh, what it, would you call it? A directed challenge, like where yeah, or a facilitated challenge. That's a good word. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love this. I love this. Um, what I what my. What I have learned is in, when I've talked with you and other life and health coaches is the difference between this and maybe traditional therapy is that this is immediate. This is something that you can take and go apply right now. Yes, exactly. And it is very empowering. Well, just like an athletic coach, that's a good analogy, actually. Yes. Instructs and motivates and, you know, observes. This is what you do. Yes, that's exactly. And I just, I, 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 I can't, you know, I just, I see nothing but benefits coming from, from working with. Let me just keep this perspective of the, the difference between counseling or therapy and coaching. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a Co a counselor or a therapist would work with someone that's been traumatized and they would talk a lot about that person's past to get it out or out 
Mm -hmm. Life coach, we are typically more future oriented. So it's after someone has worked through their trauma and they ask themselves, what now? How do I put my life together again? And a coach would like to be very good for that. So they would give you the step by step. This is what you're going to do this week. And yes, trying that and come back and report and we will tweak and see how you can do that. Is it's, that helpful? Yes, it's very, what I'm hearing there is it's very growth oriented. But it's not in competition with counseling or therapy. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, but they, the, actually they go together well. It's, oh, yes. It's, it's, yeah, I do see that. I do absolutely see that. How, how um, one is a platform for the other. Yeah, yeah, very, very good. Very, very, because if there is something biochemical or something of that nature, then it's going to hinder. It would be like the difference between your coach and your athletic physician, right? That's a good one. Yeah, that's that's exactly the difference. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I love it. This is so good. So where can they find you and and how would they join this challenge? So it's just like following along on Instagram and my Instagram handle is just Risa for coaching and okay. it's Risa and then the number for coaching, but okay. I think we can drop the link in the um, comments. comments. Yes. And we, yeah, we'll put and it in the they, link. If they go to my website, Risa for coaching.com right there on the homepage, there are instructions how to download the journal so that they can follow it. Perfect. There's also on my bio, I think on my website as well, if they want to book a call with me and start this coaching, you're more than welcome. You don't have to do 30 days first. And you, if you want to talk to me about coaching, I offer a free discovery call. People can make that appointment and get to know me, decide if they like my, my style, that we are going to be a good match. And then we can yes. start working. And well, you know, and I want to let you know, Risa, that if you want to share that daily challenge on the Breathe Life Ministries page, please do, because I think that's awesome. Okay, I will do. Yes. Thank you so much. That is such a great and generous um, thing. For oh, you. I would love it on there. I would absolutely love it on there. It, 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 it is very, it, it, it just, it's a perfect match for what Breathe Life is all about. Okay, thank you. I will do that. Yeah, definitely. So what's one what would be your challenge today? What's your challenge today for people to become their own best friend? Um, what was I, 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 I recorded it earlier. Oh, today is the so what question. Yes. Oh, oh, today is the so what question. Someone says something mean, they do something mean, and you just ask yourself, so what? Am I going to value their opinion more than my own? That's like, it's like, that's a, that's the, that's the challenge for today. It's like to trust your own judgment and God's judgment more than other people's. That's right. That's right. That's right. We have to, um, that's been like a big kind of God's big project with me this year is to align myself with his perspective. It is really a, so it's the, so what it's like, so what? What do I say about you? Yes. And I think that in a sense, that's our work. It's like a lifelong work to always come back to God's perspective, right? Yes. You don't do that overnight. And I think you, as you grow as a Christian, you mm -hmm. do different levels. Like yes. The work is never done. Yeah. It's ongoing. Yes. It's, it is ongoing going this is so good risa um let's see so risa for coaching.com and that is also your instagram uh, handle it's exactly the same yes awesome and it's how to become your own best friend thank you so much for doing this you are welcome and everyone i really encourage you to participate in this challenge. Uh, you'll be able to find the links here on Breathe Life or and get downloadable journal entries yes. from Risa's uh, website, yes. which is risa4coaching.com. Yes, this you. is so good. Everybody, you need to participate. <laughs> yes, you and, do. 
And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section. Share this video, like this video, and we will be responding to the comments. Yes, we will, I will come back and if there are yes. more questions, I will, yes, respond to them. Thank you. I will do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So even if you're watching on the recast, still go ahead and comment. Okay, guys, we will see you next week. God bless. Bye. Okay, come here. Come back. Come back. Come back. <laughs> there we are. Okay.